Hello on the sidelines fans. I am your host Cameron Cavalbianco and joining me today, I'm very honored and privileged to have this man on, Jamar Dixon from the defending reigning champions, captain at Pacific FC. Jamar, first of all, thank you so much for coming on today and welcome to the show. Hopefully you're doing well. No, thank you. Honestly, it's uh, it's my pleasure and uh, I look forward to uh to this conversation. So obviously we're going to start with about what wants you get to talk about more later, we're going to get into your Pacific FC current season, past seasons. We're going to talk about that run to the CPL Cup or the CPL Championship. I call it a cup. I know it wasn't really a, a cup or anything. Yeah, but, okay. um, the Canadian Championship. We're going to talk about the Ottawa Fury. So much to go on. But first, let's start with what made you want to become a professional soccer player? Um, I, I don't know. My, I come from a Caribbean background. My, my, uh, my mom's from Barbados. My dad's from Jamaica. And, uh, you know, there was always soccer on TV. Um, they were heavily involved in, in soccer as well. My dad played um, a lot growing up. So I used to always go to his games. Um, and it was just something that just ran, ran in, in the blood. So um, when I got an opportunity to finally play, I realized from a young age that I was good at the game and, and I could actually do something with it. And then I just continued to strive forward. And um, here we are. So were there any players possibly that maybe helped you follow with the game more specifically, like maybe guys like Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Messi, any of those guys? Yeah, for me, um, it, Ronaldinho was, uh, was my favorite player growing up. He was the way he just enjoyed the game. Um, you know, as you're a young player, you know, when he, when he touched the scene, everyone wanted to be like him. You know, he changed the game in terms of entertainment, right? So uh, it was a pleasure to watch him play. And, and also while watching him play, you're also watching Brazil play and you're watching PSG play, um, you know, Barca. You know, all these teams that he was at, you know, you, you end up learning how they play the game and, and you, you kind of, you know, you anticipate that's how the game's supposed to be played, right? That's what you, you really look at. So uh, definitely Ronaldinho, he, uh, he was the, one of my favorites. And I also love uh, Zidane as well. Yeah, two great players. Absolutely. You're not wrong, especially Ronaldinho. Every time he touched that ball, just he knew magic was going to happen on that pitch. So a really good uh, player, all around talented. Always had a smile, too, if I might add. Always had yeah. that nice smile. But you yeah. played soccer overseas also in Finland. You played in Canada, too. Yeah. What were some yeah. of the differences about playing in Canada and overseas in Finland? Um, it's, well, obviously, the language barrier. <laughs> That's one. Um but no, I, I was in Sweden first for about two and a half years. And then I went over to, to, to Finland. And um, what I would say is it's about, it's about just having the right mentality because over there, like, you know, you're not going to get as much help as you think, you know, you, you're going to run into situations and you have to be able to deal with it yourself um, and get on with it. You don't have time to dwell. Um, so um, you, you know what I mean? You also got to remember, like, you're, you're training on, on a pitch with, with a bunch of players that their friends wish they were playing with them. You know, you, you're taking jobs away from their people, right? So it's not always, um, you know, the best environment for you. But once you show your respect, once you show you can actually play the game and they like you, um, you kind of earn your respect in, in, that, in that way. So um, my main thing, if I had to tell anyone was just make sure you have the right mentality, you know, every day you got to show up to train, you know, you can't lose a day, you know, you have to make sure you're doing well at training. And then you got to do your own training after that, you got to do more than what they're doing over there. You know what I mean? It's, uh, because nothing is, is guaranteed at all. You know, they have more opportunity than we do. They have a proper infrastructure that's been in place for, for years, decades, you know, we're getting to that point, but they, they, they're in a completely different system than we are. So uh, when, when you get the opportunity, whether it's a fourth division pro team or, or top league right off the bat, you know, wherever you start, you start, but it's the same principles and the same concepts apply. Absolutely. Yeah. And let's talk about how this maybe helped you prepare for the Canadian premier league as well, but let's also throw in too. You also play with the Ottawa Fury. So when you came back, how did this all like help you prepare for playing at the Canadian premier league level? Um, no, it's, it's a great question, actually, because, um, you know, obviously I was playing in, in, in Finland, which the team I was at was like extremely technical team. 
um, they, they were known for it um, in, in Finland. And, you know, there are a lot of technical players in, in, uh, in Scandinavia, right? In Europe in general, it's just, there's a lot of technical guys. So um, coming back to Ottawa was, was a bit different. You know, um, I was playing in the NASL at those times and there was a lot of like, um, a lot of athletes, like, like I'm talking like speedsters, like can jump out of the gym, like just guys that could fly, right? Um, and then, you know, I had to also, you know, I had to switch my game a little bit. I had to adapt to what was, what the play was like here. And, and then also implement my ability and what I can do. Um, so again, it was a, it was an adjustment period, but once I understood the league and I understood the players, um, I was fine. Uh, and it's the same thing when we, um, when we, when we went to the USL, it was, a, it was another drastic change, right? You're playing with younger guys faster guys quicker guys you know instead of playing uh patient football sometimes it's just like transitions you know um so I, i'm someone who's been used to it um like i said you always got to be able to adapt as fast as you can if you can adapt quick you'll, you'll be fine um and then when i when i um when i came to the cpl it was um more or less the same thing you know a lot of great young talents um that are finally getting an opportunity to, to show themselves and shine. Um, uh, but with that, you know, players are going to want to show, show more and do more, do extra. Um, when you do that, that causes errors at times, extra for forced mistakes, which leads into um, the team running, you know, 30 yards back or 60 yards back uh, on a transition to defend. Uh, then you win the ball back and then, and then it happens again over and over. Right. So it was just a matter of just, um, you know, learning, learning the league, understanding the, the, the players from my squad, but also the other, other, other teams as well. And, um, and if you've noticed the league is, is just getting better and better, right. Um, teams are actually playing good, good football, you know, and they're trying to play and, and that's, that's all you really want to see. That's, that's how, you know, it's, um, it's taking a big step forward. So um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then let's also, I was going to ask a little later, but you kind of just kind of brought up my point about all these players that you're learning from different teams, as well as your team. What's it like playing against guys who used to play at the MLS level, the highest level in North, obviously North America uh, with guys like Kyle Becker and Ashton Morgan, both from Forge FC. Yeah, those like I, I've played with those guys as well on the, on the national team. And, and, and those are guys that, you know, they have experience in the game and, um, they, they, they understand what it is. Like uh, you talk to Bex, you talk to Ashton. Like, I mean, I had a good conversation with Ashton and it was just a matter of, he, he understood that the league is, is, is fast. It's, it's quick. There's um, it's, it's relentless, right? It's different from when you're playing at um, a higher level, uh, like an MLS where sometimes it's calm um, and then sometimes it speeds up and things like that. But um, what I'll say is it's definitely, it's definitely come a long way. You know, this is the fourth year, right? Fourth season. And you can see a massive change in the league. You know, there, there is good quality here. You have, uh, you have some MLS players, you have some national team players. Um, and then you have these, these, these young talents, right? So it's a, it's a good mix. Um, and like I said, the progression has been fantastic. So uh, it's just definitely great to be a part of it and help, uh, you know, just be a pioneer of the game here and just, you know, guide it as many people as, as you can. And obviously when you made your debut for Pacific FC that inaugural year, I believe, what was it like for you to be back in the West coast? Cause you also, I believe in a couple of your Instagram posts, you also put your second home in a way too, cause you used to play over on the West coast. So what was it like returning yeah. back to your second home? No, it was, uh, it, it was great. When, when the opportunity arised, um, I didn't really second guess it. You know, I had, I had a few opportunities to go to uh, back to Sweden. Um, I could have went to the, the U.S. as well. Um, there were some USL teams I was looking at. But, um, you know, even even with CPL, it was just trying to find the right fit for, for myself. And obviously, I just had um, a child. So, like, I had to make sure everything was in order um, in that sense. And and then uh, Victoria would just – it just it just hit. You know, I, I, I'm familiar with the – with the landscape, I know what it is out here. Um, and I just said, yeah, well, why not? You know? And then w when I, when I put on the Jersey for the first time, you know, and realized like, wow, like I'm playing for, for Pacific FC, you know, it was, um, it, it, it was definitely a blessing because I remember when I was playing with Victoria Highlanders and they were a semi pro team. And I was just wishing that, you know, at some point that these guys go, 
go pro, you know, it never happened, but um, Pacific came in and they start the CPL started Pacific came in and, you know, I'm luckily I got the opportunity to play for, for Pacific in uh, the same stadium I used to play at when I, when I first came to the Island. So uh, it, it was an incredible experience for sure. So I guess literally in a way it could be called a homecoming. Cause you just like you mentioned, you played in the same stadium that you played in beforehand as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So also let's not forget. You're also currently the captain of Pacific FC. So when you first found yeah. out you were being named captain, what was that like for you? What was your reaction to it? And where were you when you found out? Um, I mean, when I, um, it wasn't really a reaction as per se, it was more like, you know, you're in this role and, and you gotta, you gotta help lead. You gotta help the team. You gotta, you got a little bit more to do. Um, but it was something that's just kind of, it's in my DNA. Like I just, I want to help the young guys as much as I can. I want to help whoever, whoever I can share some knowledge with that will assist them in the future, you know, because when I was growing up, I always had people trying to give me advice. You know what I mean? Whether I want to hear it or not, you know, you always have someone in your ear trying to help you. So always giving back was, was, is, is number one, one thing for me, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear it, which is fine, but you know, you don't want to ever give up on anyone. You just want to keep helping as much as you can. So when, when um, in the Island games, I was a, I was a co-captain uh, under Marcel and um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it, that's where it, where it started, you know, and then the following year, um, Marcel, um, you know, was done playing and um, I was the, the next guy up and I just, I, I took it with, with honors and I just, I just try to make, um, make the best of it. And, and, you know, just, just lead the boys to, to a championship, lead the boys to, to success. And, and that's just, that's what happened. So. Right. And speaking of championships, let's jump ahead to last season or the last finals between you and Forge FC, as you guys got set to face Forge FC, what was the mindset going in uh, when you guys were first about to step onto the pitch against Forge, like going out of the locker room? Like in the final. Yeah. Right in the final, right in front of all that crowd. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it, you don't really notice the crowd. Like, it, like, I mean, that's me. I was just, I was just saying, you know what? This is another game. We, we always, um, the history of Pacific. We've never beat them. So I said, guys, I mean, this is the perfect time to start, right? Uh, and I think everyone kind of understood that. We knew it was going to be difficult from the start. We knew uh, they wanted to put us away in the first half. But if we can weather the storm, we will get our chances. And. Uh, that was, that was what we talked about. And, um, that's exactly what happened. So, um, yeah, credit to, to the coaching staff, credit to the boys, credit to, to everyone that was involved, uh, in that, in that victory. Um, again, it was, uh, it, it was just an amazing, amazing, uh, experience. That's, that's for sure. And let's talk about after that, when you guys hoisted the CPL trophy, what was it like for you guys in front of Pacific fans, just hoisting that trophy and everybody just going crazy i assume the atmosphere was just insane when you guys hoisted that trophy yeah yeah it was uh there was a lot of supporters in in hamilton a lot um more more than i expected and uh yeah it was uh it was just you know you you lift that trophy and you think about everything that you went through um personally i i thought about everything i thought about my whole career like i never won anything like that you know i've won individual awards but you know, it's better to win an award with your team, right? Um, and that's something, you know, as a as a player you strive for. So, um, you know, when we got to lift it, you know, everyone was happy. Uh, and then especially, like, with our fans being there as well to support. Obviously, it's not every single fan, but, you know, those guys, you know, they're, they're there for, for the rest of us, you know, so – that was, um, that was incredible to see, to see that, you know, it was incredible. Um, and just, like I said, again, it's just, um, it's, it's a great moment to, to be a part of. Absolutely. Yeah. And you guys possibly could be making a little bit, I don't want to jinx anything right now. I'm just going to knock on some wood right now, I guess, and say, yeah. um, you guys are tech on uh, top of the table in the CPL right now. You guys have won four of your last five matches. You guys get set to play FC Edmonton and potentially, I think you guys are trying to make another run for, that CPL trophy again and go back to back. Yeah. I mean, that, that's always the plan, you know, you, you know, every, every team's playing to, to win a championship. Um, so that's, that's, that's definitely what we want to do. 
Um, but you know, I, I, I keep these guys as humble as I can. And I just, I say, guys, it's just one game at a time because, you know, any, any, anyone can beat anyone on any day in this league. You know, there's, you know, you can't really slip in this league. You know, you have, you have to stay consistent. You gotta, you gotta keep working hard. You can't take days off because, uh, like I said, any other team on any other day could, could, could get a W right or cause, you know, an upset. So um, it's mainly, you know, I like to focus on our squad and try to fix the little errors that, that, you know, we, we've been doing throughout, throughout our matches. Um, we haven't all, even games we've won, we haven't been perfect. Even games we've lost, clearly we're not perfect, but uh, we just got to keep building, you know, it's, um, I, I don't, I don't even think it's just for this year. I think this is something where we have to lay a foundation where, where people know, like, uh, Pacific is is that club where they're constantly you know winning they're constantly in 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 the final or you know like that that's the legacy you want to build that for a club so you got to piggyback off of a championship right I mean Forge did it um, and you know what I mean like they they were they were feared and you know they're still a good and respected team because of what they did in the past right because of everything they've done and that's now something that we now have to take the steps and uh, and and do the same thing and and show our dominance right. Um, it's like I said, it's a learning, it's a learning process for everybody. And we just got to continue to, to stay faithful to the journey. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, one game at a time is always the model. Even when I used to coach soccer too, I used to tell my guys one, one game at a time. And that's how you, you guys create wins and that stuff for draws or even if you lose, you learn mm -hmm. from it. Exactly. Yeah. And so my next question actually goes back to FC Edmonton. As you guys get set to play Saturday against them, what are some of maybe the keys going into that game where you guys maybe have to work on some keys uh, to victory maybe on the pitch? Yeah, I mean, I just think uh, we just keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we just need to continue to stay compact defensively. Uh, communication is, is, is massive for, for us. Just keep, uh, keep helping each other on the pitch. Uh, and then when we get our chances, um, just put them away. Um, we, we had some chances last time we played them and we just, we didn't put them away. And this football is a game of, of opportunity and a game of chances, right? You know, if you can have 20 shots on, on target and, and another team could have one shot and one goal, right? It's just, that's just the, uh, the reality of the game. So um, I think we just need to work on those little details. Um, everything else, I think we're, we're okay with right now. We just, we, you know, we obviously can tidy it up a bit, but um, just, just like I said, the communication as a whole um, is, is, is crucial for us and just maybe trying to create a little bit more opportunities to score. And then when we get our chance to score, just put them away. That, that's all. Absolutely. And let's go to the international scene now. As like you mentioned earlier, you played with Kyle Becker, you played with Ashton Morgan. Um, what was it like getting the chance to represent Canada at the international level and playing in like World Cup qualifiers? Um, it's, it was an incredible, incredible experience. Um, you know, just to be able to play for your country is, it's an honor, you know what I mean? It's, uh, not everyone gets to do it, you know, and, and for, for whatever reason, right. There's a lot of talented players. Uh, it's just, sometimes it's a uh, luck of the draw. Sometimes it's just timing of where you are. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I was just grateful for the, for that, for that opportunity. Um, that was one of my goals. Um, when I, when I first went out to Europe, right. That was, that was on my radar and, and it happened. And, and I, I, I just, I took it. I, I did the, the best that I could do during the time I was there. So um, it, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely eye opening to travel to these places, um, places like Korea, uh, Honduras, um, Morocco, uh, like this is yeah this the name a few is just is just incredible um it's a different environment though you know um you're playing and you have fans you know throwing stuff at you like piss bags and and bottle caps and penny like it's it's just it's a different environment you know and, and it goes back to what I said when I when I was in Europe it's it's the strongest survive it's about the mentality right and if you look at our national team now they're locked in like their mentality is is hard to break, hard to break. What, what, what they've done is, 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 is remarkable, you know, not, not, not just qualifying, you know, from the hex, like first place in the heck, like that's a statement. That's, that's not just about ability, right? That's about the mentality. Everyone in the CONCACAF has the ability, but Canada's mentality was superior to, to, to everybody. And that's the difference. That's what this game is about. Right. So, yeah. Um, 
again, it was, uh, like I said, it was, it was an honor and a great experience. And um, I just, I, I hope more players um, in the CPL get, get that, get that chance, get that opportunity. Cause it's, it's gonna, it's gonna push them to want to do more. So I also want to bring up to like, obviously Canada just recently qualified. And I asked my last guest, this Andre Lombardo, who also had the chance to represent Canada. I asked him what it was like representing Canada at the international level and also now witnessing them uh, make the qualify for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. So for you, as a guy, um, Jamar, who has also played and represented Canada, what is it like to you to see now this team qualify for this upcoming World Cup? No, it's, a, it's amazing. There's, there's nothing, you know, words can't really explain it. Like you're, you're, you know, you're part of the journey. Like, you know, everyone has their time. Well, you know, you're getting to the national team from a youth. Uh, maybe some youth don't, don't make it to the, to the, the men's team, you know, maybe, maybe you're on the men's team and maybe you only play for, um, I don't know, a year with the national team. Maybe you only play for one cap, you know, but at the end of the day, you got to realize, you know, you're still c- contributing to, to that national team. You're still a pioneer of that national team. You know, you're, you're still, you, you gotta, if you didn't go to that national team and learn anything and take anything away, I mean, then that's where you lose, you know, for me, it's more of, I'm, I, I got an opportunity to represent the national team my whole time there from, from trainings, from relaxing in the hotel, from the travel, from being on the pitch, from being on the bench, watching games, like you got, you got to really take in the whole experience to be able to advise people, to be able to, you know, help the next person. Um, and then where you see the level where they're at right now, um, you know, those guys are now going to have um, an even, you know, bigger stance on the game in the future to help the next generation of players, right? Because they've seen it at a different capacity, right? So, so for me, I look at things completely different than, than other people. I look at, you know, what can you take away from the, from the opportunity of playing and, and what can you pass on to the next people that are going to get that opportunity? How can you help? Because the national team now that we have has to continue to build and thrive to be better and better and better. So how do we as a group, as a nation, come together and help these guys, right? That's my thing. So that's my, um, my, my two cents on it. But um, like I said, it, it definitely is, is, is an honor to see them going to the 2022 World Cup. Um, and uh, they're going to do their thing. They're going to do well. They're going to represent us the way they're supposed to. So it's going to yeah, be great. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not wrong. I, I agree. I, even this qualifier was a great way to see what they would do to represent us proudly. And all of us getting together and witnessing this all history be made. So my last question for you is what are some pieces of advice you can give to younger kids or younger adults who want to follow in your footsteps, who possibly want to go over to Finland or Sweden or play even in the CPL level or even at a semi-professional level? Um, The first thing I'll say is uh, don't, don't let anybody tell you, you can't do anything. Okay. Like that, it's cliche, but it's the realest thing. Like I, like I said, I signed my first professional contract at 22 years old. That's a late, very late. Okay. So, um, and I had to do it the long way. You know, I didn't have an agent. Um, you know, one day I, I'll, uh, I'll tell you my story, but uh, you don't, you don't need to plan things out accordingly because things are going to go the way they're supposed to go. Right. Everything is your, is your own timing. What you can control is how hard you work, um, how much you train, um, and your mentality, you know, the mentality is everything, knowing what you, what you want to do and, and, and studying the game. If you dedicate, um, that time to the game, I'm sure you'll, you'll find yourself somewhere, whether it's CPL, whether it's abroad, whether it's a university, like you got to follow your opportunity, right? Because some people, they want to go pro right away, but, but maybe that's not the door that's open for them. You got to take the door that's open for you work at it. And then another door will present itself. You know, you can't stop working meant like, and, and I'm talking about your mindset as well has to be on the next thing. How do I get to the next step? What's the next step? How do I do this? You know, don't try to skip five, six steps. Cause when you get that, if you get that opportunity, cause sometimes it's, you get luck. If you get that opportunity now to get to that top level right away and you fail, you fail hard. Like you, you drop down like significantly. Right. So, you got to be prepared, you know, be prepared for each moment for wherever you're at. Just keep, keep grinding, man. Because, you know, when, when you, when you deal with trials and tribulations um, at a lower level and you just keep, you know, 
climbing up every every step you appreciate more right so it's it's a matter of uh just keeping your mind right and and just stay focused on on what you believe in and and just don't don't let anyone tell you different and go and seek the opportunities don't just wait like you still gotta scratch at doors you know you gotta figure it out but when one door opens you know that's that's when everything can change for you so Absolutely. Well, Jamar, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate the time for you taking out of your day to sit down and do this interview with us. Really appreciate it. No, no problem. Not at all. Guys, Jamar Dixon, captain of Pacific FC. I'm Cameron Capobianco, and we'll catch you guys next time. All right. Take care.